Okay, hi everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the mitosis promoting factor, um, also called the M cyclin CDK complex. And uh, it's actually referred to by several different names. Um, the cyclin itself, I believe, is the D1 cyclin, but you'll hear MPF standing for different things. Um, I believe it's metamorphosis, uh, mitosis, other M's. But we're generally talking about the same thing. That's going to be the M cyclin and the CDK complex that it associates with. So let's look at where it is the most active. So we're looking at the green line on this graph. And if you'll notice, during G1 and S, that green line is near the bottom. At G2, it starts to ramp. And the M cyclin CDK, once it's produced, will positively feed back on itself and increase its own production. That increase in M-cyclin occurs till about the end of metaphase, not about actually exactly the end of metaphase, at which time it falls off sharply because it's destroyed by a ubiquitinator called APC, or the anaphase promoting complex. So it's interesting, in G1 and S, E2F, which we've talked about before, which actually drives G1 and S forward, will sit on the promoter to the M-cyclin gene and will inhibit it. So the very thing that promotes mitosis, or the cell cycle in the beginning, will actually inhibit mitosis. Um, once the M-cyclin is active in mitosis and up through metaphase, the cell will actually arrest in metaphase until mitosis promoting factor has been destroyed. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, the E2F, which drives the cell cycle forward, actually inhibits the MPF. MPF will actually inhibit cell cycle, even though it drives it into M to mitosis. And um, until the M cyclin is destroyed, that cell will actually arrest, which is the state of many eggs, uh, female eggs, as they're stored. So let's look specifically at how the M cyclin CDK is activated. So it's going to be activated by three different proteins. Um, CAC is going to phosphorylate it to activate it. We1 is going to uh, actually inhibit it. And so CDC25 is going to need to remove that inhibitory phosphate that we one puts on it. Now, if you'll look at what activates CAC, we one and CDC25, you'll see many different things. Among them is actually cell size. So three, you know, several different environmental factors act to regulate the activation of the M-cyclin CDK complex. Once it's made, however, you'll see that it positively feeds, feeds back um, to aid CDC25 in the phosphorylation, or rather the dephosphorylation of the inhibitory phosphate, and uh, it acts to inhibit V1 uh, in general so that it cannot, V1 cannot inhibit the M-cyclin CDK. I know that's a really crazy story. Let's simplify that really quickly. M-cyclin has an on switch and it has an off switch. Um, you need to turn on the on switch and then you need to turn off the off switch. So CAC is the on switch, which we turn on. We1 is the off switch. Phosphorylation at that area uh, turns it off. That off switch needs to be turned off, which is done by CDC25, resulting in an on-on M-cyclin CDK confirmation. So what happens once that's done? Well, um, oh, this is just basically a look at uh, the entire cycle in M-cyclin CDK. Sorry, I can't remember why I put the slide in. But one of the first things the M-cyclin CDK complex does is phosphorylate lamins. So if you imagine that there's a protein with two ends that are stuck together, they bind together simply because of plus and minuses. Now, uh, if you put two large anythings in the, on the ends of that, those lamins, then they'll no longer be able to come together, especially if those two things are phosphate groups and they're negatively charged. So the lamins will actually, which are linked originally like this, will begin to fall apart. Now the lamins, uh, which will surround DNA, will hold up the nuclear envelope. So if MPF phosphorylates the lamins, then they come apart, which is how the nuclear envelope actually starts to fall apart. The other thing that the MPF will do is that it will activate both condensin and cohesin 
two proteins which will cause the con condensation of DNA. So DNA will start to wrap tightly around histones and replicated DNA, sister chromatids, will actually stick together. They will have a cohesin, a protein, which basically glues them together. Um, so the effect there is that the DNA will condense and it will form that kind of X shape that people are so familiar with in mitosis. Um, one of the final things that will happen, and this is a little more complicated and a little less understood, is that microtubule organization centers will start to shoot out microtubules, most likely as a result of MPF, and some of those microtubules will actually stabilize uh, when they hit kinetochores, which are on the sides of those sister chromatids, or they will stabilize when they hit each other. But the resultant effect is that in metaphase, these microtubules, these tubes, these protein tubes that are built of tubulin, will pull apart, will, will stick to sister chromatids. Some, um, and, and sorry, they'll push each other away so that the poles are kind of moving across cross from each other, and that will result in the chromatids kind of lining up in the middle of the cell. So those are the basic effects of MPF. And what happens if you add MPF to a cell, it basically will drive that cell into mitosis. Um, and that's the structure that we have here. So if you look, let's try to get that again. Uh, so you'll see here the microtubules in green, the DNA in blue, that's because it's DAPI stained, and uh, the microtubules are associating with the DNA and uh, you've got metaphase here. Now metaphase, the cell will basically be stuck in metaphase until MPF is destroyed. Um, so at this point, the action of metaphase, or the F action of MPF has finished. It has done everything that it's supposed to do. And the cell needs to have MPF destroyed in order to move forward. And we know APC does that. How it does that, we'll discuss in a later video. But good luck, good luck on your cancer projects. I hope this helps, bye.